Hi y'all. So a few days ago I was reading a news article written by a former director of the CIA who is endorsing Hillary Clinton and I thought this is very interesting. So uh, he starts off the article like laying out his bona fides among which um, accomplishments he, he notes that on September the 11th he was standing by George Bush's side. This is not the kind of thing one does in one's life that one puts on a CV to establish credibility. This is like the worst intelligence failure we've had. And while the United States was being attacked, a, at the time it was a deputy, deputy director or assistant director, was sitting beside a president who, instead of running out of the room and trying to go do something like, I don't know, issue some orders or whatever, sat around reading My Pet Goat to some children because he didn't want to alarm them. And then they instituted the, the terror alert system. But anyway, so I think I can see why there are some problems at the CIA. This guy is a trained spook. He's a trained intelligence analyst. And instead of being at the CIA analyzing intelligence or training junior uh, analysts or revising policies or looking at better ways to look at this kind of stuff, he's busy flying around on Air Force One and standing around like a goat looking at a new fence when the United States is attacked. So anyway... He then goes on to, to say, uh, this is Mr. Morrell, Mr. Trump has also undermined security with his call for barring Muslims from entering the country. This position, which so clearly contradicts the foundational values of our nation, plays into the hands of the jihadist narrative that our fight against uh, terrorism is a war between religions. I think I can spot some other problems in the CIA. This guy is an intelligence analyst, a part of which requires knowing a great deal about the cultures uh, on which you have expertise. This is a guy who doesn't know the politics, culture, and history of his very own country. I don't imagine he's going to be doing any better at analyzing foreign countries. So these foundational values I've seen trotted about about the United States, its first immigration policy I read, was inclusive. Bring people over. Yes. And uh, it was actually a, a naturalization law, not an immigration law as such, but for naturalization, which restricted naturalization only to white folks of good moral character. But other people could still be uh, brought over, or they could still come over. The primary method of coming over at that time as an immigrant was as a slave, but you know, hey, inclusive. And actually, it's not true that our first immigration law, which uh, w was that, our first immigration law is actually in the Constitution, Article 1, uh, Section 9, Clause 1. The migration or importations of such persons as any of the states now exist, uh, now existing, shall think proper to admit, shall not be prohibited by uh, the Congress prior to the year 1,808, but a tax or duty may be imposed on such importation not exceeding ten dollars for each person. Our very first immigration law was uh, one that codified slavery and prohibited Congress from interfering. So whatever you think the foundational values of our country are, uh, it is complete gibberish to start talking about apparently the great moral United States with respect to our immigration policy of, uh, of the 18th century. Apparently this guy thinks that our foundational values are actually our contemporary values, and those are the ones that have persisted since the founding. Now, uh, every uh, high school student in private schools, I don't know about public schools, uh, in the United States, will study early American history or uh, of some variety. A, uh, a topic that is commonly discussed is something called the Alien and Sedition Acts. Now, we talk about the sedition part a lot because, you know, the First Amendment, blah, 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 but the Alien and Sedition Acts, what is the... Why is the word alien in there? Oh, I know, because a couple of the laws in that, and that uh, was actually four laws, three of them were on uh, aliens and one was on sedition, um, and included the Alien Friends Act, that it shall be lawful for the President of the United States at any time during the continuance of this act to order all such aliens, uh, as he shall judge dangerous to the peace and safety of the United States, or shall have reasonable grounds to suspect are concerned in any treasonable or secret machinations against the government thereof to depart out of the territory of the United States within such time as shall be expressed in such order which order shall be served on such alien by, by delivering him a copy thereof or leaving the same at his usual abode and returns to the office of the Secretary of State 
by the marshal or other person to whom the same shall be directed. That was for our friends you know, the, when we had uh, good relations with a foreign nation. Then there was the Alien Enemies Act. That whenever there shall be declared a war between the United States and any foreign nation or government, or any invasion or predatory incursion shall be uh, perpetrated, attempted, or threatened against the territory of the United States by any foreign nation or government, and the President of the United States shall make public proclamation of the event, all natives, citizens, denizens, or subjects of the hostile nation or government, being males of the age of 14 and upwards, who shall be within the United States, and not actually naturalized, shall be liable to be apprehended, restrained, secured, and removed as alien enemies. Those are the founding uh, values of this country, that it is for Americans primarily, and everyone else comes here sheerly, purely, by grace. No one is entitled to come here but for our beneficence. Now, it's curious that he talks about Hillary Clinton and how she's so much the better candidate than, than Trump, who doesn't uh, like our founding values, when uh, Hillary Clinton is very much opposed to some of our actual founding values. So the first Supreme Court case dealing with firearms, gun control, is actually a state Supreme Court, uh, Supreme Court case out of Georgia. It's called None Against Georgia, and I'll read some excerpts from it. Nor is the right involved in this discussion less comprehensive or valuable. Quote, the right of the people to bear arms shall not be infringed, end quote. The right of the whole people, old and young, men, women and boys, and not militia only, to keep and bear arms of every description, not such merely as are used by the militia, shall not be infringed, curtailed, or broken in upon, in the smallest degree, and all this for the important end to be attained. The rearing up and qualifying a well-regulated militia, so vitally necessary to the security of a free state, our opinion is that any law, state or federal, is repugnant to the Constitution and void which contravenes this right, originally belonging to our forefathers, trampled underfoot by Charles I and his two wicked sons and successors, re-established by the Revolution of 1688, conveyed to this land of liberty by the colonists, and finally incorporated conspicuously in our own Magna Carta. But admitting all this, giving some history, does it follow that because the people refuse to, get, to delegate to the general government the power to take from them the right to keep and bear arms, that they designed to rest it in the state governments? Is this a right reserved to the states or to themselves? By themselves I mean the people. Is it not an unalienable right which lies at the bottom of every free government? We do not believe that because the people withheld this arbitrary power of disenfranchisement from Congress, they ever intended to confer it on the local legislatures. The right is too dear to be uh, confided to a Republican legislature. In other words, like Justice Jackson said in a, in a uh, well, a case a long time ago, dealing with, uh, I think this was, it was a free speech issue, saluting the flag or Pledge of Allegiance, something like that. I don't remember the details. But he writes in there that uh, these rights, the right to worship, freedom of speech, blah, 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 and all the other fundamental rights in our Bill of Rights, these, uh, do not, these are not something that can be taken away. They do not depend on the outcome of any elections. The, the whole point of the Bill of Rights, he says, is to remove these issues from the vicissitudes of ordinary legislative, ordinary politics. It is to put them beyond the remit of normal legislative affairs and normal political discourse. It is to say that these rights depend on the outcome of no political opinion. Anyway, so then Mr. Morell goes on to talk about how he saw Hillary Clinton in action in the Situation Room on the Bin Laden raid. I never saw her bring politics into the Situation Room. In fact, I saw the opposite. When some wanted to delay the Bin Laden raid, by one day because the White House Correspondents' Dinner might be disrupted, she said, screw the White House Correspondents' Dinner. Well, if ever there was something uttered by a politician that's not political, it's to say, fuck the media. I mean, that never happens. And in respect of getting Bin Laden, who flew planes in the buildings from the state uh, that elected her as senator, oh my god, this is like the easiest political decision ever to make. Kill the motherfucker. And all she had to do was say, screw a press event that I'm not scheduled to appear at anyway. And we know how Hillary Clinton loves the press these days. How long has it been since she gave a press conference? In sharp contrast to Miss Clinton, 
Mrs. Clinton rather, Mr. Trump has no experience on national security. Even more important, the character traits he has exhibited during the primary season suggest he would be a poor, even dangerous, commander-in-chief. Well, I completely agree that Trump has no experience on national security. That makes him something something of a gamble. You don't know quite what you'll get with a, with a Donald Trump. Hillary Clinton, on the other hand, does have experience, and I do know what I'll get, because she has a track record, which is not particularly good. And this isn't even talking just about the emails. This is about other things as well. But on the email things, in another, uh, this is a Q&A he did in response to his article. The question is uh, something along the lines of, do you have any reservations about Ms. Clinton's use of a private email server to handle some of her State Department communications? His response, what matters most is that she was what she has said. Maintaining a private server was a mistake. She regrets it. And if she could rewind the tape, she would not have emailed this way. That is a nice way of saying that it doesn't matter the wrong that she's done. What matters is that after she's done wrong, and she can't deny it anymore, and has nowhere else to run, and must fess up to it, what she says is what's important. And she says, she's sorry she did it. Well, I'm sorry she did it too. But what I want is someone who wouldn't have done it in the first place. Trump has never done this in the first place. To be sure, there are, there are risks with Trump. He has no experience. You could get, <laughs> it could be, it's a, you know, pig in a poke, essentially. But it's better to have a pig in a poke than a person who has a, a long track record of not being particularly good on national security. And then to have a lapdog who claims to be politically neutral and to have voted for members of both parties for the highest office of the land, whose response is to, to you know, don't pay attention to the man behind the curtain. There's nothing to see here. Pay attention to what the person on the floor is saying. And the person on the floor is saying, yes, I did all that, but ignore it because I'm sorry and I wouldn't have done it if I hadn't have already done it, which I can't undo. But in the future, if you give me even more responsibility and even greater opportunity to wreak havoc on the national security, I promise not to do that mistake again. I'm sure that, that Hillary Clinton can find brand new ways to imperil our national security. All right, have a great day.